irreverent, over the top, and smart as a whip. This is the Rob Black Show. Welcome in. I think. You may not want to see this today. We're retesting yearly lows. I didn't know what you were saying, but it's only January 18. And that's right. Dow's down 530. The NASDAQ down 200. The SP 500 down 61. That means the NASDAQ's down about 1.3%. The Dow's down 1.5%. And the SP 500's down 1.3%. This is not material yet. 10% corrections happen all the time from all time highs on a regular basis. This is not a disaster unless you have one month to live and you want it to go out with everything at an all-time high. Don't put any meaning into that phrase, one month to live, because I'm not trying to imply that. Um, That will recover in one month. It may not recover in a month. It may be a down year. Russell 2000 is trading down 1.3%. So all three major indices opened lower. Oil is trading a little bit higher, telling you that some things are working. The expectation is that this is not an Omicron sell-off where oil goes down because we won't be traveling in the next five years. <clears throat> this is a interest rates are moving higher because economic activity is strong and robusto. If I were a coffee, I would be named robusto, but I'm not a coffee. The 10-year treasury is scooched up to 1.82%. Remember, we haven't been this high in two years. And two years ago, the markets were at all time high. Short term, higher interest rates wreak havoc on growth stocks. Mid term to long term, there's nothing corresponding. Correlating is what I wanted to say. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dad. So if you take a look at the last six months, we haven't been this high. If you take a look at last, like we are moving in the right direction. This is where we want it to move to, but we don't at the same time because easy money, we're all making all-time highs. There's people like Lisa who is trading Bitcoin and she has her own channel on Instagram and she's at an all-time high, not because she's smart, but because the environment is conducive to everyone being winners. Does that make sense? Are you picking up what I'm trying to put down? Um, Microsoft and Apple, they remember when 10-year treasury was at 3.5%. It's at 1.8. It's not going to put them out of business. It's just going to take the easy money away. Um, Maybe it's the, the punch that spiked that leaves the party. And now all we have is tequila shots, a little bit tougher. But you can still get drunk on tequila shots. I know, I know. That's not the exact best way of of phrasing things. And I get it. Let's see. For many stocks, 2022 has been a real bear of a year. More than 220 companies with a market cap of 10 billion plus are down at least 20% from their peaks. And things are even worse in the tech heavy NASDAQ where 39% of companies have dropped at least half from their all-time highs. Yesterday, in an MLK Day address, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said the U.S. economy never worked fairly for Black Americans or really for any American of color. There's still much work to do that the Treasury needs to do to narrow the racial wealth divide. That's kind of one of the things they do. They don't just fight inflation. They don't just try to get full employment but they do a lot of studying on the employment rates in America. In December, the unemployment rate of black Americans was double that of white Americans. There's a lot inside that data, but we're gonna leave it at that for now. PPP uh, loans delivered a staggering sum of money over a two month period in the spring of 2020. 93% of small businesses in the US received at least one PPP loan. Turns out that about 80% of the money went to the owners of the small businesses and wasn't shared with the workers. Now, maybe the owners were saying things like, well, we kept them on payroll. I don't know. About three-fourths of the PPP funds went to the top quintile of households and only 23 to 34% of PPP funds went directly to workers. 
That's not how it was supposed to work. And it's a little bit telling. <laughs> oh my. Did you watch the Cowboys collapse? Some teams just collapse and it's entertaining. I'm not the biggest 49ers fan, but I like seeing fans cry. I don't know why that is about me. Maybe I'm sadistic. Maybe I'm mean. Maybe I'm cruel. Maybe you're a Cowboys fan and you're turning off the radio right now. I'm sorry. Come back, please. But that was a fun weekend. Notice I'm not stressed about the markets. Rising interest rates and the fear of further rates and the Federal Reserve doing the credible thing by raising interest rates in the first quarter of this year to help fight inflation or maybe doing it twice in one move to get us started and get it over with. It's all like your children who fear shots. It's not as bad as you think. Speaking of shots, Moderna says they're going to have a flu shot, COVID shot ready for the fall of 2023. Stoked by that, unless it divides our country even further. Oh, it's so interesting. Uh, it feels like every weekend now, if you travel like 10 miles from your home, you come back with the sniffles, you're like, oh, I just got COVID. Or it could be a flu or a cold. There's new chatter. The Fed might feel compelled to raise the target range for the Fed rates by 50 basis points in March just to start us off. That would not be the worst thing. It's like tearing off the Band-Aid. There was militants. And please forgive me for not knowing how to pronounce this, but the Houthi militants attacked an Arab oil facility. And the declaration that UAE will retaliate for the attack has stressed people out. Anytime wars happen around oil fields, oil prices move higher. So the Iraq war sent oil prices spiking. The Iraq war too sent oil prices spiking. Inflation is bad in oil because it's a tax on our economy. It's a tax on our businesses. It's a tax on individuals. So not only do you have the United Arab Emirates having issues with tribes within their country, but the Russia-Ukraine tensions have added to the escalating cost of oil, making it kind of a double whammy, higher interest rates and higher oil. Ugh. And then we get to earnings. Earnings results and guidance should become an increasingly prominent driver in the next couple of days. The fourth quarter earnings report period is just getting started. And it'll last into early March. Dow component Goldman Sachs failed to live up to a bullish billing. Goldman Sachs stock. Goldman Sachs stock. Goldman Sachs stock. Say that five times fast. Is creeping lower after the company came up well shy of expectations. Microsoft pulled a rabbit out of the hat today. They buy. They buy. My grammar, not so good. They bought Activision Blizzard. Woo! Microsoft buying Activision, $95 a share. Remember the last crash that we had two weeks ago in the stock market? I bought shares of Activision Blizzard. So I'm stoked this morning on that news. But also I know that at one point in time last year, Activision was trading for well over 100. So it looks to me like Microsoft is going to deal. If they can clean out Bobby Kotick's mess of sexual harassment issues at Activision. Deal won't close until 2023, but man, that just makes them the number three publisher of video games behind Sony and Tencent out of China. Lots going on. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. The Rob Black Show is brought to you by EP Wealth. Learn more about EP's unique approach to managing wealth at robblackshow.com. Invest in what is really important. Rob Black has partnered with EP Wealth Advisors. Are you concerned with financial planning, tax planning, managing your investments, or just planning your retirement? Rob Black has partnered with EP Wealth Advisors. With over $12 billion in assets under management and more than 80 financial professionals at the helm, EP has your financial future in mind. Learn more by visiting robblackshow.com. That's robblackshow.com. I do my best work when the markets are under duress because I don't have a lot of emotions. Um, it sucks that I had a dad who was an alcoholic, but I learned to hide emotions. I couldn't let him see that he freaked me out. I couldn't be late. I had to, you know, if my grades disappointed, I'm like, I had to like have the straight face. So that helps me a lot when it comes to investing. So you got a good lens today. Okay. Oil prices are at a seven year high. That's a good thing. Um, <clears throat> you want everyone to do well. In the world and in, in capitalism, 
you don't want monopolies. You don't want industries running wild and muck. But the CEO of ExxonMobil says the trend is lower. Now, what is that all about? And it's probably tied towards electric vehicles. As you get supply and demand tighter, events happen around the world lead to a lot more volatility because there's less of a buffer. He thinks we're going to see that for some time now until the industry begins to ramp up production, and increase the level of supply to meet growing demand. And then demand starts to come down just a little bit and you have oversupply and you get more stability. I, I don't want to say I agree with him. Exxon, it said it's targeting net zero greenhouse gas emissions for its operated assets by 2050. Um, this is the age of lithium. This is not the age of oil. And I think that's something that you have to kind of go with a little bit. The growth is going to be in the smaller players who are putting together solar and electric vehicles. The growth is not going to be in the, the bigger players, the Exxons and the Chevron. Um, they've had their day. It's, they will remain an important player for world energy needs. But the growth is elsewhere right now. The big got big and the big got fat. It's worthy of leaving it at that. Let's talk about some of the other things that we're seeing out there. I guess I can hit, before I hit Microsoft, let's hit Tesla real quick. I always thought the Tesla Cybertruck looked like a bit of a goof. To the point that even when Elon Musk was introducing it, when was that? Two years ago? asking for a $100 deposit, which is refundable. I always thought it was going to be kind of a goof in the sense that it just, it looks so, it looks so futuristic. And I guess some people like that. It looks like it could be in a video game called Cyberpunk 2077. Oddly enough, there is a vehicle that looks like the Cybertruck from Tesla in Cyberpunk. So it looks like it belongs in the future. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's a bad thing. But Musk promised delivery dates have always had to come with like maybe a grain of salt. Um, he promised it for 2021. Ain't going to happen. 2022 doesn't look like it's going to happen. Maybe 2023, but there's also some uh, Musk has, you know, his product roadmap has changed oftentimes. And they've pulled the cyber truck off the website, which may mean they can't figure out how to do it right. Um, the production cycle is just wrong. And it's going to extend a couple more years to get going. But there's now rumors that it's a project that might be canceled. Interesting. Well, let me see how Tesla's doing today. That's an interesting one to me because it's such a high flyer. It's holding a thousand quite nicely. It's up today. Interesting. How that happened? I'm going to have to look. I know last week Tesla said they're going to accept Dogecoin for some merchandise. Huh, how is, Te maybe, how is Tesla up today? Is that a good question? We will find out by the end of the show. Heck, I'll try to find out right now. 800-516-1220 to get your calls on the air. If you want me to do any sleuthing for you on stocks, call. Um, I used to do a show called Stock Talk where I was just pulling financials and it was fun. Nice. Um, it's interesting because the only thing it's being tied to is that the cyber truck production will not take place until next year. Um, Tesla pushed the cyber truck production from 2023 from 2022. Not surprising, least. Huh? There's absolutely no story on it yet. So maybe something like Kathy Wood, a big investor is buying is using big amounts of cash to, to buy big amounts of share of it i don't know talent metals ticker symbol t-l-o-f-f has entered into an agreement with tesla for the supply and purchase of nickel concentrate to be produced from the tamarack nickel project in minnesota what's interesting to note about that is it's the age of aquarius no it's the age of lithium okay so where was i going to go in this segment oh, i was going to go to Microsoft and Activision. I will do that. Microsoft's buying Activision, major video game publisher behind the Call of Duty franchise. All cash deal, $68.7 billion. 
Uh, in July 2021, Activision stock was $95 a share. So they've fallen down to the $60 level. California is suing the publisher over allegations of widespread harassment that proliferated due to the company's frat boy culture. So Microsoft is inheriting some of the cockroaches. And typically when you inherit one cockroach, you inherit many. Microsoft will become the third largest video game maker. They'll have franchises like Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, Candy Crush. In addition, major game studios like Blizzard Entertainment and Treyarch. They'll have more product from the past to add towards Microsoft's Game Pass, which is the best deal in video games. Basically, 10 bucks a month, then you get a like the brand new Forza game. You get the brand new Halo game. So if you're buying more than two video games a year, right there, you've already made your, not made your money back. But it's a pretty good service. <clears throat> For the record, I don't play Microsoft Xbox. My kid does, but I don't. Microsoft said Activision games will appear on the company's Netflix like video game subscription, Game Pass. And they can go back and put like World of Warcraft there. And it's a value now. And Wall Street loves subscriptions. Game Pass has 25 million subscribers. Created a lot of visibility. The deal happened very quickly. Gaming continues to grow. It'll be accretive to Microsoft earnings on day one. Now, because I own some shares of Activision, I need to disclose that. This will help Microsoft in the race to the metaverse. Most important part of the deal is the teams that Activision is giving to Microsoft, which could be a little bit problematic in the sense that a lot of people in tech hate Microsoft and won't want to stay with the company. I will have to decide what do I do with my shares of Activision? Do I keep them and turn them into Microsoft shares? Or do I say, yeah, that was a nice return in under a month. I'll move on. Electric and Arts, Take Two Interactive, Nintendo, all moving higher. Apple needs to buy Nintendo. It's a natural, beautiful, wonderful fit. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter, Rob Black Show, YouTube, Rob Black Show. Resources to help you manage your money. Visit robblackshow.com. That's robblackshow.com. I want to put a couple finishing spit polishes on the Activision Microsoft deal. There's a $3 billion breakup fee that Microsoft has to pay Activision if it doesn't go through. Whether from competition levels of the government. I think it goes through. And I think the next set of deals we'll see is take two should go after EA or EA should go after take two. And I think Apple or Google should go after Nintendo. I'd like to see Apple because I own shares of Apple. And I think the quality of Nintendo is the quality of Apple. Um, but yeah, that's pretty crazy as far as consolidation goes. Who's a loser in this? In my opinion, a loser would be the consumers. So Activision had a reason to come up to counter-program Microsoft. Now they will be Microsoft. What's the, uh, the bad guys on that Star Trek show? The Borg? Assimilation. So everything's... Will Microsoft down the road have to... It's a $2.5 trillion company. Will they have to spin out the gaming division? I like it because I would create shareholder value. Okay, let's move on. So one of the things I like to do when the markets are getting hit and beat up is go to lists. I think lists are super important. I'm a person who enjoys a good list. It goes back to Dave Letterman's top 10 of my childhood that every night I would tune in to see what the top 10 from the home offices in Mesa, Arizona or whatever it was. And I always got a good snicker out of it. Um, and then it became kind of tired and kind of old and it went on for too many years, but it started out okay. So on a down day, I'm looking for a list of growth stocks. On a down, on correction of 10%, I'm looking for growth stocks. On a correction of 20%, I'm double looking. So here's some stocks that I've looked at that I'm interested in that are, in my opinion, growth oriented for instance copart they're an industrial company they make vehicle parts and other kind of things that we need to, to build and for autos other names that you may want to look at um 
are names like Roblox. Um, it's a stock that I'm looking at. It does not mean that you should look at it, but I'm looking at it. Um, in large part, they make video games that are kind of in the metaverse. There's a young girl in Utah who started, she was lonely during COVID. So she got on Roblox's platform and she made up a game and she integrated music into it and she integrated 3D shapes into it. And suddenly she was killing her time with buddies from different countries that she had never met. Roblox should be in play in the video game world, in my opinion, because they're down aggressively from their all-time high, right around 130 down to 60 bucks. Yeti makes the coolest darn coolers in the world. I know you're saying coolers. That's right. Coolers. Like, yeah, things you go camping with. Every family probably has a cooler in their garage. Yetis are considered the best in the world. They're stolen. Like if you go camping, you want to lock that, that baby up in your truck before you leave the campsite. So do I own any? Nope. Take two interactive is a stock I'm looking at today in large part because it's about 40% from its all time high. Now I can't buy it for another two or three days because I just talked about it. So I'm not giving you the complete list of what I'm intimate with, but I'm trying to. An interesting one that doesn't really interest me, but it qualifies as a growth stock that has come down a lot, Sonos. They're a speaker company. They're a high-end speaker company who Apple's high-end speakers didn't really ever hit, right? The AirPods, not the AirPods, the, what were those called? Yeah, I guess they were HomePods. Yeah, HomePods. So they ultimately went from a $399 version one down to like a $99 version one to kind of compete with Amazon's Echoes. Sonos has done well on the high end and Apple could buy Sonos like a, like a lollipop. It would be easy. Uh, and it would, again, get them in the home market with high-end product that has already been altered to work with Amazon's Alexa. Can't be that hard to make it work with Siri, right? So I like having lists at times like this. I like reading through breaking news to see who's getting upgrades today and who's not. Goldman Sachs came out with earnings that were ultimately blah. The Shaw of blah. Global markets revenues down 7% year over year, about $4 billion. Goldman Sachs not immune to softer market conditions. Revenue slipped 11% on the equity side. It's worth noting that the revenue for global markets shot higher by 23% in the year earlier period, bolstered by a 40% spike in equities when people were at home and trading stocks. I could see down the road, like an Apple and a Goldman Sachs getting together in a vertical that you weren't really expecting. We're not going there yet, but... I, on a day where there's mergers and acquisitions happening, I'm stoked. Um, other stories of note out there today. Some upgrades that I'm seeing. Hyatt Hotels upgraded to outperform from neutral. What's interesting about that to me is, does that mean Omicron's playing out for the better? Delta Airlines upgraded to buy from hold. Same thought. Does that mean Omicron's playing out better? Las Vegas Sands upgraded to conviction buy from buy at Goldman Sachs. What's that tell me? Again, it keeps telling me again and again and again that we're starting to think, see COVID as becoming a seasonal flu where COVID has killed more people in the last two years than seasonal flu has killed in the last 10. So we're kind of hoping we get there. And again, I'm not a doctor. Don't pretend to be one. Last week, I talked about a company called Illumina, ticker symbol I-L-M-N. It was the company that first found COVID floating around in the air in China. They make sensors that detect uh, viruses and terrorist threat, biological terrorist threats. I see cities going more and more and more trying to contain future epidemics. And there will be future epidemics. We have them every two or three years, it feels like. Whether it's Ebola, bird flu, swine flu, you name it. Mad cow disease, not quite an epidemic, but in the same vein of try to catch the stuff early. 
I was doing a little bit of research on flus because I just I was curious over the weekend. In the 1930s, influenza viruses were isolated from people proving that influenza is caused by a virus and not a bacteria. We've come a long way in 100 years. In 1960, the U.S. Surgeon General, in response to substantial morbidity and mortality during the 1957-58 pandemic, he recommended an annual influenza vaccination for people with chronic debilitating disease, people age 65 and older, and pregnant women. Pretty interesting, right? In the 1990s, we had um, an important milestone where flu vaccines became covered benefits under Medicare. You had a bird flu, which was first isolated from a farmed goose in China in 1996. You had the H5N1 virus identified in Hong Kong as the bird flu in humans. A lot of developments in flu, which I was a little surprised on. Like I could throw down hundreds of odd little facts, but I'm not going to. I'm pretty sure everyone's already tired of me talking about flus. Wow. Peloton is hiring McKinsey to review cost structure. Peloton is a mess of a company right now. And they too can be acquired by Apple because it kind of fits into their wheelhouse. High-end equipment. But Peloton over the on Friday, and this didn't really make big news, but they said they're going to raise prices substantially. I was like, well, that's a suicide bit if you ever expected one. And what do I mean by that? Um, tacking on hundreds of dollars in fees to its bike and treadmill, basically citing inflation. They want to get the product to you fast. They want to get it with semiconductors built in, with screens all ready to go. And those are all very short inventory right now. So beginning January 31, the company is going to be asking customers to pay an additional $250 for delivery and setup of its blue and an additional $350 for its tread. That will bring the cost of the product up significantly, $1,700 to $2,800. Um, those are pricey items and an extra $250. Like, are they trying to get a push right now for you to buy? Peloton is a mess. Morale is at an all time low company spinning out so fast. They did so well with COVID and celebrities getting on saying that like Howard Stern, like, Hey, I got a Peloton. I'm working out. Um, and people wondered what happens when gyms open back up. And well, we, we have that answer now. Walmart's quietly preparing to enter the metaverse. This one, to me, sounds like it could be a sloppy mess. The big box retailer filed several new trademarks late last month that indicate its intent to make and sell virtual goods. When I heard Walmart's getting the metaverse, I'm like, does that mean I could put on a headset and shop at my local Walmart and then it'll magically be delivered to me? I was like, that's kind of cool. And then, no, they're going after NFTs. They're going after patents that don't really feel a lot of girth it's almost like a an announcement from a corporation to say look we're cool and hep you can find me online at rob black show twitter rob black show youtube rob black show honest straightforward and right to the point the rob black show limbics are about to start up i gotta think that comcast and nbc got delta blow late last week when china said no fans will be allowed It just doesn't feel like the Olympics when there's no fans. This is the Winter Olympics in China. There's been a lot of issues with China's human rights. And the United States government saying, we're not going to show up and support this. But the athletes can go where they want to go. But even more importantly, companies like uh, historic IBM, And new companies like Airbnb and Nike, they're running commercials and they're going, yeah, we got to turn our eye morally to what's going on in China's work camps. And China's like, yeah, United States, you should take a look at yourself. You imprison more people per 100,000 than any other country in the world. Like, yeah, yeah, there is that. Oh, this was kind of interesting. I forgot about this. 
this was kind of a Friday story late, but this is one that I like. Netflix is raising prices. And I don't know about you, but every week I turn on Netflix, I feel like, wow, they got like three or four new more new shows. How do you pay for those? Well, we do, you know, all right. Uh, their basic plan, their standard plan, their premium plan now goes to uh, 999, 1549, 1999. That's pretty nuts. Um it's not horrific, but what I get out of that is they've got pricing power. When I look at what I watched last year on Netflix, I feel like $19.99 a month is a bargain. But it's also starting to come very close to the, the cable packages that I used to have. But the cable packages are stuck with crappy programming, in my opinion. Now, again... I'm going to be a fan of HBO Max if they could ever figure out how to show the world that they are HBO Max. From a subscriber count, they're, they're easily number three behind Disney and Netflix. But that's not a bad one. Their problem is that they're so tied up with Time Warner and just like just these sloppy AT&T relationships that, that didn't integrate well. So I'm going to be watching that. But anytime you're able to have pricing power, I, I think it's a good thing. Uh, I'm not going to beat that one up too much. Let's take a look at how the markets are going. We open down big. We have a market that is concerned with higher interest rates. We were down to these levels about two weeks ago, and then we started to recover. It's funny because I'm sitting here looking at stocks, and I'm, you can't see the salivation but it's there. Um, I mean, everything's down. Those are days that I love. Disney's up three cents. Activision's up 28% because they're being acquired. Visa's up a buck 49. I don't know why, other than that it's been in the news a lot on a lot of negative levels. Um, this was kind of an interesting twist and I don't want to get too political on you. But... I was reading some political commentary over the weekend that if the elections turn into a route that the Republicans steal a lot of seats back in Congress, that Biden and Harris would basically effectively say, yeah, we're not going to run. And Hillary Clinton would run. <laughs> Whoa. That would be a doozy. Uh, just, I'll just tell you that that would be media rich and it's all i'm gonna say on that one but uh the approval rating on biden's not good and typically that means in the mid-year elections mid-elections midterm excuse me it, it can be quite negative you know i'm starting to see some stocks make some moves back up now sorry i'm doing this kind of in real time and it doesn't always play out quite as intelligently as i want it to so let's go back real quick to what we're seeing today. Microsoft's acquiring Activision Blizzard for nearly 70 billion. Microsoft and Virgin are investing in a Tesla-like self-driving company called Wave, spelt W-A-Y-V-E. What's interesting to note about this is, wait, wait, why Microsoft? Why Richard Branson's Virgin Group? That one doesn't make a lot of sense to me on the surface. Wave is a self-driving firm founded in 2017 that uses machine learning, artificial intelligence, and optical cameras to enable vehicles to drive themselves. Using cameras and AI is very similar to the approach Tesla is taking developing full self-driving cars. You might be aware that Tesla is all about saying that LiDAR is not going to be the way to go, LiDAR or radar, that it's going to be visual cameras. And the LiDAR and sensor people are saying, no, 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 he's got that wrong. So LiDAR is way more expensive. It's essentially a laser-based radar, LiDAR. Um, and they want to design a car that can self-drive itself the way humans drive with eyes and brains. I still don't get why Microsoft and Virgin are involved in this. But I'll work on it. I'll promise I'll dig up, I'll dig for answers for you. 
800-516-1220 to get your calls on the air. Biden's free COVID test program gives out fewer tests and is significantly slower than its UK equivalent. Anything you want to talk about, we can talk about money investing and more. There's some crazy funny headlines out there. We'll take a break here. We'll be back. Irreverent, over the top, and smart as a whip. This is The Rob Black Show. 